Hello, you're here with Daniel from Green Orchard Photography. Welcome to another quick edit. Here I'm going to take you through a stylish and effective way of digitally framing your photography. Most people at one time or another have tried a framing style and more often than not they end up not being happy with it. This style of frame really showcases your work helping it to stand out so much so that it actually looks like it's coming up off the page. To start off you need to have a version of Photoshop installed on your computer uh, either CS4, CS5 or CS6 will be fairly similar in functionality. Um, I'm working off CS6 at the moment. I previously had CS5 um, and what I'm about to show you in this tutorial is exactly the same in CS5 as it is in CS6. It's quite basic. Um, so let's get started on the image. Um, obviously you need to open up an image in Photoshop and to give you a little bit of a uh, an overview of what we're about to run through um, or what we're hoping to achieve by the end of this tutorial is that we start off with our image, we're hoping to get a border around this image um, and frame it in a way that it's got a drop shadow that really lifts it up off the page. So I'm um, currently working off a Mac so I'll be using the terminology command um, but on a PC obviously that is control. So um, to start off you want to have your image open, you want to press command A. And then once you've got command, which is obviously selecting, selecting the image, and we want to uh, create a new layer. So we then press shift command J to create a new layer, which would now become the background layer. Um, and what we need to do from here is the border. We need to bring the border in. So uh, effectively what that means is that we're going to increase the canvas size um, and now I increase my canvas size by one inch generally uh, but this is a per it's a personal preference as to how you like how you'd like to present your photos um, so what you do to to expand your your canvas size is alt command C uh, will bring up the canvas size window or uh, alt Control c on a PC. Now, as I said before, I my personal choice is inches of uh, one inch uh, for the width and one inch for the height. Now, you need to make sure that relative is select because what relative does is makes it makes certain that um, the image, the, the extension of the canvas size around the outside is, is relative um, all the way around. So in essence, it's even. Uh, your extension color will be white, uh, and then just press on OK. Now you've got your canvas uh, enlarged uh, with your white, uh, your white border that you've just applied, and it will be showing to you, obviously, in the size that you've selected. Now what we need to do from here is apply that drop shadow. So in order to apply the drop shadow, you can see down here is the a little effects button. So click on the effects button and you'll see a list of all different effects that you can add to the image. But what we're looking to add is a drop shadow. So select drop shadow. Now all of the, the figures in here will all be preset to a default default preset. And we're going to change most of them. Um, and we're going to make it so that we get a uh, drop shadow on the left and the bottom of the image. So to start off, uh, I generally do an opacity of 40% uh, because obviously being a shadow it needs to be quite light. Uh, the angle that I the angle that I generally uh, look to apply to my images is, is around 49 to 50 degrees uh, but for the sake of this tutorial I'll just I'll just leave it on 49. Now the distance, I always put in forty. Uh, this is a set. This is a set set of numbers that I always use. So forty for the distance, sixteen for the spread, and fifty-seven for the size. Now, as you can see, if I clear those out, if you have a look, oh, oops. if you have a look at the image as we change these numbers you can see that the shadow is changing with it. So here it's a very harsh sort of 
shadow that's really on the page that's it's quite solid. However, when we start to feather out some of these uh, numbers, so I apply a 16 on the spread, and like I said before, a 57 or even a 60 on on the shadow, on the size of the shadow, it spreads out that shadow to make it obviously more shadow looking. So I'll put in 57. Now, we want to uncheck use global light. Now, obviously I should have said this earlier, but that will change it back to 120 degrees. Uh, just flick it back over to 49. Um, oops, 49. Um, and yeah, and there you have it. That is your drop shadow. So click on OK. And now you can see on your image, you've got your white canvas extension and you've also now got your gray border uh, or your gray drop shadow in that picture. So you could flatten your image here and uh, save it out as a JPEG or save it out however you like to save it. Um, and, and you'd be done. However, what I find it works really well on these images is if you go back to the effects button down in the bottom corner and click on stroke. Now, obviously the defaults, what a stroke is, it's a thin line. You'll see a thin line has appeared around this image. It's black in color. Uh, it's a thin line that it puts a border around the picture and, and I find that it works quite well with the drop shadow because it lifts it away from the, it separates it from the shadow. Uh, generally, I'll put in two pixels as the amount uh, for the structure. Uh, you want to position the line inside the picture. You leave the blend mode as is, you leave opacity as it is, and you change the color. I'll choose white in this instance because I've got a white background. If you've chosen a different color background, then you can cho you, you generally choose the line color to suit the background color. So select OK and OK and you're done. So now you can see that there is a line that runs around the outside or of the image. And that helps to lift it away or separate it from the shadow and the, and the, the, the frame. And there you have it. That's all. That, that's, that's as simple as that. It's quite simple to do. It's quite effective. You could even save it as an action. You can record it as an action. Um, and then it's just a, and you can even set it as a, a shortcut key so that it's as simple as a one key, one key press and you've got your border and, and, and it's, and it's done. So thanks for watching. Um, I might, my, uh, I will be putting out more videos over the, the coming weeks. Um, if you like, I've got a Facebook page. You can, you've got, um, if you've got access to the internet, you can jump on there and, and, and like my Facebook page and you'll see more of these tutorials as they come out. Thank you.